Hey guys, today we are reviewing the Nike Air Zoom Alpha Fly Next Fly Knit, the absolute best shoe I have ever run in and still my favorite shoe of all time. These bad boys, I probably have 500 miles on them and they just go and go and go. I'm running a half marathon this weekend and I will wear these shoes. That's how good they are. So let's get into the review. Um, first off, these were highly anticipated. Remember Eliud Kipchoge, uh, he ran a 159 marathon in these. You couldn't get them, right? This was in 2019, they did that documentary. You couldn't get these shoes, you had to get on a waiting list. They were like incredibly hard to get at first. They came out to such fanfare and rightfully so. This is a race day shoe only, I would advise. It has absolute unmatched responsiveness. It's an extremely exciting and fast shoe. The fastest shoe I've ever seen. The most comf I, I think it's quite comfortable. I, I, you know, I've seen some reviews online that say it's not comfortable, but I think it's comfortable. I love the boot and let's get into that. The boot, um, this is with the fly knit material. It's a little different than what you've seen. The Adam knit material, different, different than what we've seen, but like there's no doubt that these shoes are gonna make you feel like you're flying. Like this is as fast as it gets for me. They, they do come with a carbon plate. So there's a carbon plate in the shoe and the carbon plate is in here. And when you do step, you feel like you're getting shot forward with the shoe. It feels like you're just getting like propulsed. Like you're just boom, boom, it's sending you. You will literally and figuratively get a bounce in your step, I always say. Now it's very pricey, it's very expensive, but I mean, I don't know how important a personal best is to you, but in my opinion, it's worth roughly 10 to 15 minutes for the average marathoner. Uh, on a four hour marathon, it's probably worth about 15 minutes. That's not a joke. 10 to 15 minutes, this thing is worth on a, on a full marathon. It's worth about four to five heartbeats per minute for the same pace. So you will exert roughly four to five heartbeats less in wearing these shoes than you would at the same pace. You know, if you're running an eight minute mile or a seven or a nine minute mile, you're gonna exert about four heartbeats less. Now, those of you that ever run long distances, you know, if you could just keep your heart rate down, you could keep going or vice versa, you could push harder, right? Because your body only has a certain capacity. You know, I'm 42 years old, my kind of max should be about 178. So I can push at 175 for a while, but I can't push forever. So if I can go four heartbeats lower, that does wonders. Um, it's to me, the absolute best Nike shoe ever made. I know they've made a lot of new ones. I continue to wear this one. It's the old one, it's the good one. Um, there are PRs to be had out there. So they come in a whole bunch of sizes, I think six to 15, only one width. It only comes in this one width, but the toe box is, I'd say larger. The toe box is larger than what you're probably used to. I have very wide feet. I have double E's in my dress shoes and I fit into these. They're very hard to get on. So. They're very, very, very tight and very hard to get on. You need to pull on this thing here and this thing and you need to create like a window for your foot, kind of like that, right? So you're pulling and then you're trying to, it's like I wore these for my Ironman and all three of my Ironman, all four of my Ironman, I wore these bad boys and it, I, I lost a bit of time in transition because like it took me an extra five seconds or so to get these on. Now five seconds of 14 hours or 12 hours or 11 hours, not a big deal because as soon as I put them on, oh, I had a bounce in my step. So uh, what do they have in them? So let's get into the details of the front sole, the midsole, the cushioning, let's get into all that. So um, Nike says they're designed for like 100 miles or a couple hundred miles, and you should not be wearing them kind of every day. But I tell you what, if I have a tough weekend workout, if I have like a 20 mile workout or a tempo or this morning, I wore these this morning for my tough, I had tough intervals to do. So I had sprints and then I had to do a fast mile and a short break and fast mile and short break and then a tempo. It was an hour and a half and it was it was tough. Uh, I wore these because I knew I wasn't, I had been battling a bit of a cold. I knew I'd have a bit of a hard time for the tough workout this morning. So I cheated and I wore my cheater shoes. I refer to these as my cheater shoes. They're that good. Uh, they come with a, a very thick wedge of the Zoom X foam two zoom air units on the four. So these are the zoom air units and obviously the carbon fiber plate. The result, it's kind of like running on a trampoline, right? So it takes some time to getting used to. Do not wear these to walk. I'm telling you right now, you're not gonna be comfortable walking in these. It's not a hoka. This isn't made to do mall walking. Um, I guarantee you, if you've never tried these on, when you will put them on, 
it's going to be a different feeling. You're going to feel like a different person. So um, I wear a, a whole bunch of other Nike shoes. I love Nike shoes. I'm a 10 and a half or an 11 in most of them. 10 and a half for most of them. I'm an 11 in this one. So take that for what it's worth. Maybe a half size bigger for you guys. Try them on. Obviously, don't buy these. Uh, don't buy these while trying them on or make sure you're able to return them. So the upper half is made of a uh, fly knit material. It's named, uh, they, they call it the Adam Knit. The fabric has been steamed and stretched and it's very lightweight. It's it's contoured, it fits around the, around the foot. It, this is a much different boot feel than anything I can think of. Uh, you know, the Hoka's or, or the, you know, Saucony's or Brooks or Asics, they do not have this, this Adam Knit. Like it's, it's like a sock almost. It feels like you're putting a sock on. It's very breathable. Um, and it holds only a little bit of water. So I did wear these once during a very rainy run and I ended up getting blisters. I did a half marathon and I got blisters. So take that for what it's worth. Um, it does feel tougher than some of the like Vaporfly Next uh, Adam Knit material that they have. It feels like more sturdy and tougher than that. Like these have a lot of miles on it and you can kind of tell it, it's hardened. It's a little hardened. Uh, it's light. This is very light. And I think the whole shoe uh, is just over 200 grams for my size. If we look at the midsole, so the midsole kind of in here, this is where I'd say the magic happens. Uh, it's responsive, it's bouncy. There's the two Zoom Air units. Uh, they act as springs and they help you achieve a faster toe off. So this is a spring right here. You step and you, you, you get the toe off. Um, it does take a little bit of getting used to. So it's not like you're gonna go out in, in the first day. I'd say if you're if you're planning on running a race with them, I'd say do a two or three miler. But I'll tell you what, I bought these and I wore them out of the box. And I did a personal best with them. So like right out of the box, first race, personal best. Um, the the couple other things I'll say about the mid work, uh, the mid toe is, they're bouncier than the Vaporfly. They're a lot more bouncier. The Alpha Flies are bouncier than the Vaporflies for sure. The stack height is higher on the Alpha Flies than the Vaporflies. So it's, it's a little different. It's 35 millimeters in the forefront and 39 in the heel compared to 32 and 40. Definitely feel higher off the ground in these compared to the Alpha Flies. Uh, the outsole, the outsole, it's a good racing shoe. And on the roads, the grip is fantastic. Now, I wouldn't recommend wearing these on trails too much because you're so high off the ground and I don't think it's a great trail shoe. Um, and the rubber outsole is thicker under the forefoot, where, which is where most runners need it. So I, I would not use this as a trail shoe. Use it as a run shoe, uh, as a road running shoe. How much are you getting for your value? So no doubt that these are expensive shoes. They're not built for every day. They're not built for, you, you just, you have to know why you're buying this. You're buying this because you want to race a 26 miler and you want to get a personal best that you want to qualify for Boston. You want to, first time my brother mentioned these to me, he's like, you got to buy cheater shoes. We call these cheater shoes. You got to buy cheater shoes. You got to buy them 10, 15 minutes. I did not believe him. Now I know that there's, there's nothing faster. Um, you might have a bit of calf pain kind of afterwards. You might have a little bit of calf pain afterwards because because of the you're higher off the ground and you're getting more a little bit more work on, on the on the pronation i guess of the foot it's a little more unstable around the corners be careful so i wouldn't use these around a track or if you're doing like a a 1k loop kind of run or, or a 400 meter track I, I i don't think these would necessarily be great i mean they're going to be fast but just the, the corners are not necessarily ideal I think if you're a heel striker or you're someone who over pronates, you probably want a stability race shoe. And if you prefer a high heel to toe drop, you probably want more of a heel to toe drop than this does. But for everyone else, runners who can go fast, hold that pace, runners who like a lot of cushioning, runners who want to do a personal best and runners who are either neutral midfoot or forefoot strike runners, you are going to love this shoe. Bouncy cushioning, maximum time, Honestly, if you haven't gathered it by now, by the way, Nike's not paid me anything to do this. I'm doing it out of the goodness and kindness of my heart so that you guys can get the experience and the know-how. They are tough to get on, but once they're on, you will go fast. Guys, don't forget to subscribe, give us a like, and check out the other vids on this channel. Check out Charlie and I, my brother's podcast, where we review our journey, the running journey from being overweight to overweight dads that weighed 250 pounds 
to running our first marathon, qualifying for Boston, Ironman, World Championships for triathlon, etc. Check out the running journey on this YouTube channel. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll see you in the next video.